Hello, hello. Who is your number one pick in the NBA draft? Besides Chuck Norris, I mean, uh, probably Jabari Smith. I, I think they're going to go with, I'm pretty sure they're going to go with Jabari Smith. Chet Holmgren is like too thin. He's like a stick. So I would say Jabari Smith. Hey guys, what's up? How's it going, everyone? How is it going, everyone? Looks pretty good. Looks pretty darn good. So, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about uh, China maybe secretly attacking Bitcoin. I'm not really sure if that's true or not, but we're just going to say it might possibly be true. And we're also going to look at um, Binance kicking their competition while they're down because that's how a real man does things. And it's actually good for customers because Binance is actually um, making their Bitcoin trading fees free. So it's very good for us users, but they are kicking the competition while they are down. You know, like we, I, I'm, so, I'm kind of speculating that China would actually attack Bitcoin because they see Bitcoin as a threat to their digital yuan and they want to take out anything that's a threat to their digital yuan because that's the way they're actually going to control people. So we're going to talk about that. And it's not, and I don't think it's above the Chinese government to do something like this. So I, I definitely think it's a possibility. Now, is it really plausible? I don't really know. If, I, I really don't know if it's plausible or not, but I definitely think it's a possibility. Oh, by the way, uh, KuCoin and Bybit have been slapped by Ontario with um, basically penalties because they're violating some kind of regulation or other. Let's actually talk about that first. So here is the story about that. So Ontario Securities Commission slaps Bybit and KuCoin with penalties. The, the Canadian regulator said the two exchanges were selling unregistered securities, like they always say they are, to Ontario residents. No surprise there. A top Canadian financial regulator has slapped two exchanges, Bybit and KuCoin, with enforcement actions for failing to comply with securities laws in the Canadian province of Ontario. So obviously they're saying that those two exchanges um, sold securities. Did they sell securities? Yeah, probably, but uh, we will have to see if they actually did sell securities or not. The Ontario Securities Commission determined that both exchanges were operating non-compliant platforms that allowed Ontario residents, um, the, the, uh, they determined both exchanges were operating non-compliant platforms that allowed Ontario residents to trade unregistered securities. Foreign asset crypto trading, foreign asset trading platforms that want to operate Ontario must play by the rules or face enforcement action, which they did. Jeff Kehoe, director of the enforcement at the OSC, said in a press statement, the outcomes announced today should serve as a clear indication that we refuse to tolerate non-compliance with Ontario securities law. Uh, Bybit, which recently confirmed it was laying off employees because everyone's laying off employees um, in preparation of the crypto recession type of thing, um, reached a settlement with the regulator. As part of the settlement, Bybit paid nearly... 2.9 Canadian dollars or 1.9 American dollars fine with to the OSC and agreed to work with the agency to properly register. Meanwhile, Bybit won't accept new accounts for Ontario-based customers or market its services in province. So uh, Bybit is cooperating. They were been slapped by fees. They're cooperating and it looks like they want to stay on Ontario. But KuCoin is not having any of it. Um, he's uh, They're also being uncooperative with the investigation. So KuCoin, we know, does do a lot of shady stuff. They're, they are based in the Cicelli's Islands, and they've been permanently banned from participating in, in Ontario's capital markets. The OSC also hit the exchange with $2 million fine, as well as nearly $100,000 in investigation-related costs. But the $2 million fine and $100,000 investigation costs, they might not pay it because they're banned from Ontario anyways, and I'm not really sure what incentive they actually have to, uh, they actually have to actually pay the fine. 
The penalties come over a year after the OSC told exchanges operating in Ontario that they must contact the OSC or face enforcement action. So it's not like these. Uh, so it's not like these exchanges did not have a forward warning. They've had a year of warning. They've refused to comply. So they were destroyed. Well, they they just got slapped with fees. They didn't. They weren't actually destroyed, but they did actually get slapped with some serious fees. Yes, please hit the likes on the way in. So that is uh, the the um, the story there. But let's actually talk about the China thing because that's actually kind of interesting. I definitely think it's plausible. I definitely think it's plausible that China could actually be attacking BTC. And they want to get rid of BTC because there's still people mining BTC um, in China uh, despite the ban. So people are actually going around the Chinese ban to actually mine uh, BTC. So they're like the Chinese officials are definitely aware of this and they want to cut down on it. So they they handed out a they handed out a warning, but they could be in dis, like discreetly attacking BTC. Like who knows if the Chinese government isn't actually shorting BTC and like attacking certain protocols because it wouldn't be above them to do it. And if anyone catches them, like what are they exactly going to do? Like find the Chinese government, they're not gonna pay you. You can't really do anything to them. So China warns Bitcoin is heading to zero and maybe they're trying to make it go to zero, but Bank of England looks on the bright side. Official Chinese national news media, uh, official Chinese national news media outlet warns readers that Bitcoin could go to zero value in order to dissuade them from investing and using a cryptocurrency. We know that China has instituted a Bitcoin ban, but we also happen to know that uh, people are in China are still using Bitcoin. So the Chinese government has capitalized on the violent downturn in crypto market by warning crypto investors that Bitcoin prices are heading to zero. The, th the South China Morning Post reported on June 22nd that Chinese national news media agency Economic Daily had issued the warning about the largest cryptocurrency by market cap to further dissuade citizens from adopting use of crypto. The, the Economic Daily report says the West is to blame for creating highly leveraged market that is full of manipulation and pseudo-technology concepts, which is said was an important external factor which contributes to Bitcoin's volatility. Um, I mean, they are right that it is full of manipulation, but obviously, like, they actually might be one of the main manipulators because if the country throws its weight into trying to tank Bitcoin, it might actually have something there. Bitcoin is nothing more than a string of digital codes and the returns mainly come from buying low and selling high. That's also not wrong. Um, but people actually have trust in its value. In the future, once investors' confidence collapses or when sovereign countries declare Bitcoin illegal, it will return to its original value, which is utterly worthless. But the thing is, like, they're trying to get other sovereign countries to declare it illegal. But obviously, like, only China has really declared it illegal. Other countries have actually legalized it, which doesn't bode well for their argument. But China could actually attack Bitcoin uh, using their massive financial funds uh, discreetly, not overtly. The Chinese government banned Bitcoin mining last July, but remember, 20% of the mining still happens in China, so people are actually going around the ban, and the government might actually be pissed off because of that, so they want to kill Bitcoin completely. And has grand plans to launch a central bank digital currency, which they've already launched, called the Digital Chinese Yuan, or ECNY nationwide. It banned all cryptocurrency transactions last September, and infamously banned foreign crypto exchanges from operating the country, uh, in the, within the country in 2018. So their plan has actually been in position for about four years now. The Chinese government isn't the only one weighing in with the predictions about where they see Bitcoin's price grow, uh, going. On Monday, founder and CEO of Market Analysis, uh, DMARC Analytics, Tom DeMarc, told MarketWatch he believes the crypto market is in line for prolonged price reductions because BTC has fallen below 50% from its November peak of $69,000. Such breakdowns speak a high probability that recovery to all-time Bitcoin highs will recover many will require many years, if not decades, to accomplish. Um, that's not actually true. So because like we did this already, I mean many years maybe, because last time it took about four years. So it might take a couple of years to to accomplish on the rebound, but not many decades. And next time we do accomplish on the rebound, it'll probably be over a hundred thousand dollars. I'm betting at around one hundred fifty thousand. However, there is still a chance for it to bounce back into the 40,000 range within the next few months. I mean, like, I think you can look at the economic condition 
and realize that it, we're just in a really bad condition of because where economically the country is right now. I think that's the main thing you have to get out of this. This does not negate the prospect of up to 50 to 56% recovery over the upcoming months, which implies Bitcoin rally back to forty to $45,000. In contrast to Beijing's warnings, the Bank of England has begun to see the upside potential of building wealth in the crypto space during a bear market. Deputy Governor of the BOE, John Kunliff, told Bloomberg on June 22nd that crypto firms that manage to stay afloat during the current downturn could be the dominant players in the industry when things turn around. And that is true. Whatever happens over the next few months to crypto assets, I expect crypto technology to fi and finance to continue. It has the possibility of huge efficiencies and changes in market structure. Meanwhile, El Salvador's president, Nia Bukuli, addressed the Bitcoin world on June 19th in regards to the slumping BTC prices. He tweeted that people should stop looking at a graph and enjoy life because he is confident that prices will recover. I second, on, I definitely second his opinion uh, because like, if and and the thing is, I second his opinion because he should be actually looking at you should be looking at long term as well. But the main point of this is like China's warning that Bitcoin's going to zero, and I think like they could actually be taking market like the government itself could actually be taking market actions because it would be really hard to track uh, back to the Chinese government itself. And even if you do catch them in the act, there's really not much you can do against the Chinese government taking like short positions. And they do actually have the money to actually bring the market down. So that is, that's kind of like another danger if China is willing to pull the trigger on that. But it would actually be very, very, it would actually be kind of dangerous for them to do it as well. So I do think it is possible. I definitely think it is a pot. I, I definitely think it's possible that a government entity like China would actually try to tank Bitcoin for their own political purposes. Doesn't this affect VET? No, I mean, they're only worried that they're, they're only like uh, worrying about Bitcoin. Their main concern is Bitcoin. Like China realizes that none of the other coins really like China realizes that all the other coins rely on Bitcoin. So they don't really care about all that stuff. Everyone is an expert whenever Bitcoin dips. Wait until we hit under K. But no, this doesn't really. But no, this doesn't really affect VET at all. Um, the thing is, if China is going to attack any coin, they're going to attack Bitcoin. They've already made mining illegal. I mean, attacking it doesn't mean like banning it or anything right now. Attacking it means like would they actually take massive shorts on Bitcoin? Like China is not going to attack any of the altcoins. Because all the altcoins depend on Bitcoin. If they can actually make Bitcoin go to zero, they'll effectively have neutered the crypto market. So it's not outside the realm of possibility that they actually go at they that the, the government itself actually takes positions. Especially if they see it's becoming too much of a threat to the digital yuan, which right now it's not because they've banned it completely in China. And I think people are actually adopting the digital yuan. So that is like one thing that we could actually run into trouble with. Because like the world's second largest economy, the people who are in control of the world's second largest economy don't want to be left behind. And they don't really want this thing taking precedence over their creation, which is the digital yuan. So they could actually be actively trying to like kind of destroy it uh, in their own way, which definitely would be bad for us. Now, I'm not saying this is absolute or I'm not saying that like this is what's going on. I'm just saying it's definitely possible that they do something like this. The South China Morning Post reported on June 22nd that Chinese national news media agency Economic Daily had issued the warning about the largest cryptocurrency by market cap to further dissuade citizens from adopting the use of crypto. The Economic Daily report says the West is to blame for creating highly leveraged market that is full of manipulation. Uh, we, we already covered all of that, but I mean, they're actually right about a lot of this stuff. And they might actually just use this as an excuse. And plus, like, like I said, like if you even if you catch them, it doesn't really matter because you can't like what are you going to do against China anyways, even if you actually catch them. A lot of the VET officers are Chinese, but VET is actually based in Singapore and they just opened up a headquarters in Ireland as well. So they are they are slowly moving out of China at this point, but they still have deep connections with Chinese industry and Chinese business. So it, it does play it does actually play both sides. Obviously, like Beijing is bad talk, uh, bad mouthing Bitcoin because they really do see Bitcoin as a threat to their digital yuan because they see like you know even with the Bitcoin a mining ban placed in, their country citizens are still mining BTC. 
So the fact that their country's citizens are still mining BTC, even with a ban, they know that like what a threat it could actually be. And they can't control B they can't actually control Bitcoin like they can control the digital yuan. So because like they really want to control the economic activities of their citizens, um, essentially like yeah, because they want to really control the economic activities of their own citizens. Um, obviously, they're going to be they're going to be trying to destroy all real competition, and obviously that's bad uh, for the that's definitely bad uh, for the rest of us. Will they succeed in doing it? I'm not really sure, but I don't really want I definitely don't want them to attempt to do it because a big country like China could definitely tank BTC really hard because they do have the economic power to do so, and there's really not much you can do about it if they decide to do so. If a couple of big whales can like, you know, tank BTC so hard, then a major economic power like China can definitely do it as well. And that is something that we do have to keep in mind as we go about this market. So that's, that's, a China, that's how China could secretly attack um, Bitcoin. I, I, don't, I don't know if how, good of a, how great of a prospect it is, but it is something that I guess like, you can speculate on. So let's actually talk about Binance is actually making, let's actually talk about how Binance is actually making um, Bitcoin trading free. Uh, I think it might only be Bitcoin trading. It's, it's Binance.us. So this is for US investors, unless like you're in New York or something. So this is the, uh, this is the article right here. This is the article right here. So Binance.us is kicking competitors while they're down. The manly way to do it. So Brian Schroeder, a Schroeder CEO of Binance.us, said the zero trading fees would generate positive user sentiment. Obviously, if you make user, user fees tr uh, free, it's going to generate positive user sentiment. And said there are plans to expand the list of tokens that will offer zero fee trading in the future. Very, very cool. Crypto exchange Binance.us has removed trading fees for Bitcoin spot market trades following in the footsteps of Robinhood, which pioneered no commission crypto trading in 2018. Brian Schroeder, CEO of Binance.us, said the move makes the, uh, makes the company the first U.S. crypto exchange to eliminate spot trading fees for Bitcoin for all users and without trading volume requirements. He added that they would also not be earning a spread on trade. So they're basically making every single thing free for trading Bitcoin on um, Binance.us. But it, lo it only looks like it's Bitcoin. They I don't think they're doing it for altcoins. So this is basically to draw people in because they don't want Bitcoin trading fees and then maybe make some money off the altcoins. I think this is a great idea because all the other exchanges are suffering. And if you want to leech some of their, if you actually want to leech some of their uh, users, why not offer free Bitcoin trading? Because you're still making a lot off the altcoin trading, obviously. But like getting free Bitcoin trading for a while could actually draw a lot of users to Binance.us. So this is actually like, we see this as an opportunity to revolutionize the way fees are approached uh, in our industry, increase accessibility to crypto, and better support our market and customers in a time of need. Okay, cool. Crypto is at a pivotal moment and we are never done working for our community. Staking and zero fee BTC trading is just the beginning of what we have in store for you. We designed an innovative tiered pricing model which will go into effect this summer. Very cool. We hope our pricing model sees broader industry adoption over time because what that would have positive impact on the ecosystem and market participants overall. We are happy to lead the race to zero fees everywhere. And I am very, very happy, obviously, that they have zero fees because zero fees are freaking awesome. The news of increased comp competition on fees puts pressure on its competitors to do likewise. And because like its competitors obviously aren't doing very well financially, this is a very, very smart move for Binance.us because Coinbase is letting go of people. I doubt they can actually afford to try to match Binance US, Binance.us on these fees. So they're getting pressure on their competitors at exactly the right time. Robinhood, which is already at all-time low prices, saw its share price stay relatively stable, but it's already dipped a lot. Coinbase currently charges trading fees of between 0% and 0.5%. Kraken charges fees between 0% and 0.26%. FTX charges trading fees of 0% to 0.2%. The amount charged as a trading fee typically depends on the currency pair, 30-day trading volume, and whether the order is a maker or a uh, taker order. Taker orders generally pay more fees. Makers generally pay less fees. 
Uh, Schroeder told Bloomberg on June 22nd that Binance.us would not be earning a spread from its no-fee transactions and would instead be generating revenue from other sources, including a new staking service. So they're, off they're going to offer a new staking service, and obviously they're going to take a st uh, share of the profit. So Binance.us and probably Binance itself is looking for new ways to actually make money besides trading fees. He says that zero trading fees would generate positive user sentiment that will bring us new users. That will definitely bring them new users, especially day traders who make a lot of trades per day. And said there are plans to expand the list of tokens that will offer zero fee trading in the future. At present, users of the U.S. license exchange can take advantage of fee-free uh, fee trading on four Bitcoin stock market uh, uh, market pairs, BTC USD, BTC USDT, BTC USDC, and BTC BUSD. Addressing his 8,200 Twitter followers, Schroeder added that the company will also be rolling out a new tiered pricing model, which will go into effect in the summer. The tiered system will be split into three parts. Tier 0, which offers free trading on certain cryptocurrencies, including the BTC pairs already announced. Tier 1 and Tier 2, which will have trading fees determined on a per asset basis. So essentially, um, they'll still have fees on some coins, but Bitcoin trading will actually be free. This is obvious. This is actually obviously really good news for uh, uh, for Binance users because they get free trading. Voyager more likely to get bought out, eaten by a bigger well. Maybe, maybe. Um, Voyager's in a lot of trouble. They're on the hook for they're they're actually on the hook for like six hundred over six hundred million dollars. So they're in they're actually in a lot of trouble. Voyager's actually in a lot of like in, in a lot of trouble. I don't really know what they're actually going to do. Will you're in finance ever go back up? Uh, I'm not a huge fan of YFI, but they do have a pretty good chance of going back up. I mean, when the market recovers. Look, everything is riding on when the market actually recovers. I just don't really know when the hell the market's actually going to recover. Yeah, like so the the other like Look, the other the other crypto exchanges are basically being kicked while they're down because now, like since Binance is offering zero fees, they might actually have to offer zero fees to match. But the problem is they can't actually offer zero fees right now because they're because their numbers are down in the dumps. Binance is not a public company. They don't have to worry about like they don't really have to worry about like public numbers. They don't have to worry about quarterly profits, and they make a lot of money off their other services. While Coinbase, being a public company, has to like has to basically tow tow to its investors and make uh, and make a lot of profit every single quarter. So they're like Coinbase and Binance are in two completely different worlds, and Binance is in a much much better position than Coinbase. That's what I, that's like. That's definitely something that that's something I'm pretty sure of. Like Binance is in a, just a much better position than Coinbase. To basically like do what uh, to basically do what they want, uh, Coinbase is not in the pos CB is really not in a position to match Binance on whatever the hell Binance is actually doing, and they're gonna be uh, they're definitely gonna be a little they're definitely gonna be a little bit screwed because they can't really they can't really uh, match Binance and whatever uh, what, on what Binance is actually doing. So yeah, that's what we that's actually what we have. Um, that's really what we have right now. Binance.us is basically taking it to the competition and the competition is basically begging for mercy because they can't match Binance.us. No one's shorting this pump, at least looking at BTC USD shorts. I mean, the, the thing is like, if, look, look, if Voyager completely crashes, I'm sure we'll actually go, if Voyager completely crashes, I am almost sure we'll probably go down further. Um, Voyager is actually a fairly well-known name. So if I were you, I would try to get as much money off the Voyager broker service as possible right now. Uh, because like they might actually freeze. I think they already limited like withdrawals to $500 a day or something stupid like that. But um, th the thing is like, I would try to get my money off Voyager. They have, they have six, they have over $600 million in exposure uh, via, not via Celsius, but like they have over $600 million in exposure um, to three arrows and three arrows is basically not going to pay them any of that money back. So they're pretty screwed. Uh, they're actually pretty screwed as far as that goes. So I would definitely watch, I would a hundred percent watch out for that. Cause I really don't think like, I, I can't see this coming. I really can't see this coming out that well for them because like they're, they're essentially screwed. They're kind of screwed. They're, they're like really, really screwed at this point. 
So I would definitely like watch out. I would definitely a hundred percent watch out for that because like it, it could get, it could actually get pretty, it could definitely get pretty ugly for them. hundred percent. Uh, I got off crypto.com. I smell a bank run coming. Well, the, the thing is like, this is, remember, this is all caused by Do Kwan. So remember that, like this is, this is actually all caused by Do Kwan because pretty much everything is bouncing off Terra Luna's collapse. Binance must have best margins in space with little expenses and based in tax haven. No one will even know how much they have stashed away, unlike Coinbase. Well, then the thing is, like, they're actually getting regulated. They're actually getting regulated licenses in a lot of countries, like, especially in, like, Europe. They're, they're def like, Binance.us is definitely making their inroads into Europe. And that's gonna, that's really gonna help them in the future because they can actually operate it. They can actually operate from a very regulated space then. Yeah, so, like, I would get off, like, the thing is, like, right now, if you're, like, I would get my money off of centralized exchanges. There definitely could actually be a run coming. Um, Terra Luna's collapse basically started a cascade, and I don't think the cascade's about to be over right now. I do think the cascade is, I think the cascade's actually might get more and more severe. I don't think the cascade's anywhere close to being over. So, right now, you gotta, right now, you just gotta be careful. Like, fees going sky high with CDC is a massive red flag. Oh, definitely. Uh, look, Binance, like Binance probably does have really good margins. Like, remember, I think like Binance makes so much money off like, uh, le uh, off liquidating leverage. And like, if you actually, uh, if you can actually liquidate, if you, if you can actually deal with leverage and liquidate people who leverage, you're always going to be in f healthy financial terms because there's always going to be a desperate people who are gambling on leverage and they're going to lose like 90% of the time. So I think Binance is healthy mainly. I actually do think Binance is healthy mainly because of that. I definitely think Binance is healthy mainly because of that. There's a new pump right now. No one is shorting this pump. Okay. I don't know why Coinbase acting like expensive her to get a girlfriend. Well, I mean, like Coinbase is like, look, look Coinbase is a public company. Like you, I don't, I think some of you don't understand that public companies have to meet quarterly expectations and public companies are supposed to, are public companies in the United States. They're, they're expected to grow uh, basically infinitely forever. Because that's the ex that's the ridiculous expectations we have for our stocks and our public companies. Now, growing forever is obviously not possible, but that doesn't stop us from demanding that they grow forever. So they're kind of like handcuffed by modern. They're honestly handcuffed by modern capitalism. Um, they're really handcuffed by mo by our modern Wall Street capitalism, which demands infinite growth on an infinite level, which is obviously not possible. But it doesn't matter if it's impossible. We still demand it because that's just the way Americans do things. The company will shutter the be shutter the best interest of them and not to the customers. I mean, the co the company is always look the 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 executives and the presidents of the company are always going to favor the investors over the customers because the investors are the ones who decide if the CEO and the executive board stays or not, not the customers. Inflation, yeah, inflation does give you a default percentage of growth, but you can't have accelerated growth every single quarter forever. Like you, you might be able to get like low maintained growth, but like they expect revenue growth quarter over quarter, and that's not really possible. I you ate two hundred bucks in fees for like a one k trade. That that is pretty bad. I have to say that is really really bad. So yeah, like I, I think like a lot of these, a lot of Binance's competition is just not, st a lot of the Binance's competition is just not stacking up very well to Binance right now because like Binance has the financial flexibility to basically do whatever the hell they want. They don't have to like listen to bitchy investors all the time. Whereas Coinbase does actually have to listen to its shareholders and its shareholders, a lot of, um, and its shareholders actually a lot of the time are not actually thinking in the long-term best interest of the company. They're basically thinking of like how to maximize or maximize profits or minimize losses for the next quarter. So obviously, uh, so so because of that, obviously, um, you know, their interests don't really align. Their interests don't really align, and Binance just made it harder for CB by actually making by having like zero fee trading. We losing CRO DeFi wallet. Uh, Yeah, like, like Binance just made it much, much harder for every other exchange 
because they're, they're basically putting the microscope on other exchanges right now. And like if the other exchanges don't match, which financially would basically ruin them, um, you'd actually be kind of screwed, honestly. So it's kind of like you have like the, the other exchanges basically have like two bad options right now. You either have to sacrifice like you have to sacrifice like a short term profit, which would anger investors uh, for maybe being able to compete in the long term, or you have to sacrifice long term competitive edge for uh, short term profits. Neither of them are actually uh, neither of them are actually like good. Um, yeah, like neither of them are really good options. But you don't really have a lot of they don't really have an option to not take one of the options right now. I mean, staying neutral and staying put isn't an option for them. So they're definitely um, they're definitely going to um, be they're definitely going to be hurt. Coinbase is also closing down divisions. So Coinbase is bidding goodbye to its pro service division because I guess not enough people wanted the pro Coinbase service, probably because it costs a lot of money and people decided that it just wasn't worth it. So here's that story. So Coinbase is discontinuing its Coinbase Pro version. The platform is signaling all its, it's migrating all its services under one account alongside introducing a new advanced trade feature on Coinbase. Crypto exchange Coinbase has announced that it's putting its, a stop to its Coinbase Pro version of the services by the end of this year. The exchange further stated that it will be replacing its pro version by introducing an advanced trade option on Coinbase.com to help simplify crypto transactions for the masses. Uh, Coinbase is so basically um, they're going to be they're going to be migrating all its pro services under one unified platform. My guess is like the pro services didn't have enough users. The exchange in a comprehensive blog post. Review, uh, reveal details on how it plans to put an end to its pro service version and introduce an option of advanced trade on the Coinbase app. So they're kind of like migrating to an app as well. So, so if we look at the uh, Coinbase blog, a lot of a lot of interesting a lot of interesting things happening at these big exchanges. So like hello advanced trade goodbye Coinbase Pro. So for those of that so if those of you that use Coinbase I don't think this will affect anyone. I don't think this will actually affect any of us, but maybe, maybe. So basically, hello, advanced trade. Uh, goodbye, Coinbase Pro. Later this year, we'll begin sunsetting Coinbase Pro to migrate all advanced trading into one unified Coinbase account. So Coinbase Pro was originally GDAX. Um, actually, this kind of sucks. Because like Coinbase Pro is pretty much like if we trade, Coinbase Pro is what all, all of us use basically. We don't use the broker service because the broker service costs a lot of money. So they're like so Coinbase Pro is going to be Coinbase Advanced Trade. Bringing customers access to popular features like staking, borrow, DAP wallet, and Coinbase card from a single platform balance. Advanced trade on Coinbase.com is already available globally with the same volume-based fees as Coinbase Pro. So they're basically just changing the name and they're basically rolling Coinbase Pro back into Coinbase. Over the coming weeks, we'll be rolling out advanced trade in the Coinbase mobile app along other with other improvements to make advanced trade an upgrade from Coinbase Pro for every customer. I don't really know how you would actually make it an upgrade. Giving more options just seems like giving more ways for people to get wrecked. We'll notify customers again when we are ready to share concrete dates for sunsetting Coinbase Pro, probably sometime in the fall. We launched Coinbase Pro in 2018. Actually, like Coinbase Pro wasn't launched in 2018. It was GDAX before. And it was like, like GDAX existed for a long time before. We launched Coinbase Pro in 2018 as a tool for advanced traders to conduct technical analysis and place trades by interacting directly with Coinbase Exchange Order Book. Uh, customers have told us they, how they love the power and singular focus of Coinbase Pro for buying, selling, and swapping crypto. This is basically the same thing that every other exchange offers. Uh, I will have to say Coinbase's interface is pretty good. Binance's interface is pretty much just as good. And then you have like interfaces like Bittrex, which completely suck. Meanwhile, on Coinbase.com and Coinbase app, we have been adding advanced crypto features to foster deeper engagement with the crypto economy, such as staking, borrow, DAP wallet, and Coinbase card. So they're rolling all of this into one, in addition to improvements to our core trading experience. As a result, many customers rely on Coinbase Pro and Coinbase.com for overlapping sets of features and often experience friction when transferring balances back and forth between two products. So 
Essentially, right now, you have to transfer from your Coinbase wallet to your Coinbase Pro wallet back to your Coinbase wallet. Now, there is no fee for actually doing that, but it is a big of a hassle. So they're wrapping everything into one so you don't really have to do that, which could actually be pretty cool. After developing a better alternative for our Coinbase Pro uh, customers, we released Advanced Trade on Coinbase.com earlier this year. Advanced Trade is equipped with all the capabilities of Coinbase Pro, but upgraded with the most seamless Coinbase experience to make informed trades faster and easier. So that could actually be pretty cool. Like going back between Coinbase and Coinbase Pro was always kind of a hassle. I will have to admit that. Baby Coinbase Inu? Definitely not. This doesn't feel like a bear market. Still too many meme and crap token out there. Well, look, look you're not going to get rid of all of those, all right? Like people are always going to speculate and people are always going to be willing to buy meme and crap tokens just for the chance of a pump. You're not going to get full capitulation on anything. That will never actually happen. Happy birthday then. This doesn't, uh, yeah, like, like pro trading fees were almost free, super low. Well, I mean, the thing is, they're just basically wrapping it up into advanced trade. Hopefully, this doesn't actually do anything to the fees. I just signed up for a Coinbase one. Okay. What happened to the court ruling on M uh, MT Gox? Never heard anything. It was at 120,000 going to be released. I think they I think they've like slowly released it. I don't think the MT Gox release really had to really had much of an effect on price anyways. I think people just quietly forgot about it. Like it was big last year and the year before, but I think people just like quietly forgot about it. Every exchange manipulates the price of coins. I mean, I do believe there is some insider trading going at Coinbase, going on at Coinbase between the employees. I think it's way, I think it's actually way way too convenient. How like um, how basically how like there's always a bunch of bu big buy orders for a, a certain coin before that coin gets listed. So I do believe there's definitely manipulation there. So I don't doubt you on that one. If you look at Coin Market Cap, a lot of coins are pumping. Yeah, look, every market's manipulated and crypto is no different for markets actually being manipulated. I think like people are looking for, like people are expecting too much if you think like, if you want crypto markets to not be manipulated because that's just really not, that's really just not going to happen. I, I don't really know why alts are actually pumping right now. Um, it could just be a whale pump. It could be like looking for exit liquidity or maybe like, they're just trying to like uh, play catch up to Bitcoin right now. Really hard to say. I mean, they're not really pumping. They're going up. The only one, like Polygon is the only one that's like really, really shooting up, being over 25%. The rest are generally 10% or lower in terms of going up. And that kind of movement is, that kind of movement honestly is pretty regular. Um, some, there are a couple of coins that are pumping pretty hard. But like Bitcoin overall had a positive day. And because Bitcoin overall had a positive day, everything else is going up as well. Is a massive BTC buy on Binance? I mean, uh, well, some whale could just be trying to manipulate on Binance. Like, uh... So some whale definitely could be trying to buy on Binance. I mean, exchanges try to manipulate the prices all the time, and exchanges definitely have the power. No, like, Polygon is pumping. Polygon's up, like, 25%. It's definitely pumping. I'm not really sure why Polygon's going up so hard. Maybe they absorb some kind of Ethereum project. Who knows? Coinbase Inside Trading. Dude, we all know, like, I think all of us suspect that Coinbase has some insider trading. I mean, it's way too convenient on the big buys on Coinbase, like, right before they list a coin. Why are all coins so much coupled with BTC? They've always been coupled with BTC. People look at Bitcoin as, as kind of like a health gauge for the entire crypto industry. And plus, a lot of coins are still paired with Bitcoin. See the research report in Coinbase a few months ago, which showed that all the coins they list, which have VC backing, all sell off as soon as they are listed and perform worse than ETH and BTC. Yeah, there's there's big dumps after they get listed as well. Like the Coinbase pump and dump is very well documented. It's not as big as it used to be, but it's still big, pretty big for some coins. It will hit BTC bottom when 99% meme and crap coins die. I mean, they won't like they won't completely die, and they might actually revive in a bull market. The thing is, like, I think your quest to, like, erase all, like, to get rid of all meme and all coins is just uh, 
crap coins are just is just not going to happen. It's not re a realistic possibility even. Like I, I don't think like it's even I don't even think it's like a even a realistic possibility that can actually happen. Because like there's always going to be new coins popping up. As soon as the market turns a little bit better, there'll be new coins that actually pop up. There will always be a bunch of crap coins in the crypto space. I, I don't think you can actually stop that. I got to be quick and lucky at the same time. Yeah, if you're if you're trying to like make it rich during a bear market, you do have to be quick and lucky at the same time. Um, you can try shorting, but that can go really wrong as well. I don't know what FLM actually is. Uh, do you see? I don't think like the insider trading is really ever going to get like caught at Coinbase though. There's too many layers. Yeah, crap coins also lose you all your money too, most of the time. Everything was a scam. Yeah. Dude, it was pretty obvious that Debian was just trolling all along. Former Thai prime minister. We should have banned him a long time ago. Former Thai prime minister was doing an interview from his home behind the desk. You can see a BTC block clock. Nice, nice. Fed, uh, I don't really know what Flamingo is. Fed gas and diesel tax break supposedly coming. I don't know if that'll actually get through Congress. I doubt the GOP would actually pass it, though, without some kind of compromise. Uh, I can trade on regular Binance. I do, too. Uh, yeah, but lots of coins have 100x like from their start, but not many people actually got in like that early though. I think there's a Doge Eni on XRP already. Yet. I mean, like there, there's probably some kind of like crap coin like that. No one really cares about it though. Like truly, like no one actually cares about that. The, the Fed gas and diesel tax break is actually kind of interesting. Like I don't really know how much that would actually lower gas uh, gas by. My guess is like not very much. I don't think it would actually lower gas prices by that much. Maybe by like 15, 16 cents. I'm not really sure. I lost 1.3K on ETH. Well, yeah, ETH will probably rise again in a bull market. And $1.3,000 isn't really all that much. Most of us have lost way more than that in the bear market. I see peace, smooth crypto. Yeah. BTC ready to BCH ready to bounce. A uh, BCH is kind of garbage though. I mean, like none of the BTC forks are really going to do all that well. They've already massively lost position and massively lost like ranking in terms of like market cap to other coins, and they're going to continue doing that. Because like no one, look, look, the thing is like people only use BTC not because it's incredible technology or it's really fast or anything. It's because people look at BTC as the index coin. There's a lot of like industry money in it and there's a lot of like big money in it. BCH, BSV, all those don't have any of that. So they're not going to do as well as BTC. I just trade and it's ready to pump. Imagine people bought uh, at three hundred fifty dollars. No one really knows no one really knows what the bottom is for BTC. Um it can go down to about 15 16,000 if like Voyager completely collapses, maybe even more. I wonder how many people bought BTC at less than $100 and still have it now. Probably a couple, but not very many. Most people aren't going to hold on for that long. I mean, there's been a lot of like I think there's going to be a lot of like hedge funds and crypto collapses um, based off of Terra Luna like they've already been. I think like, you know, I think like the crypto like DeFi and CeFi and finance stuff is like much more centralized and it's dependent on a couple much more, it's much more dependent on a couple of protocols than all of us actually think. 
ICP was 600 at launch, now six. Yeah, ICP debuted like way too high of a price. There was no way that ICP was worth remotely that much. Uh, there, there was absolutely no way that ICP should have been worth remotely that much at launch. It was obvious, like it was obviously like pumped up. There were a lot of people that I, there were a lot of people that got burnt on ICP. I thought Vex at five dollars still getting yield farming rewards at least. I did not buy Vex at five. I think I bought, bought, bought Vex at one eighty. But the thing is, like, I'm just gonna wait until the market turns back up on Vex, and I believe it will actually on on stuff like Vex. I do think like the governance coins are gonna have a rebound, especially for the ecosystem that actually survive. Dude, I never really got what the hell ICP was about. I feel like it was just a bigger version of Filecoin, and now they like try to expand in different directions. I don't. I never really figured out what the hell the purpose of ICP was. Like they kind of tried to explain it, but they kind of failed at doing it. Yeah, ICP debuted top five. Like there was no way, it, there was no way that ICP deserved top five just for no reason at all, basically. Like I have no idea why it went that high, and of course, like it's falling back to the position it should be, because like no one, like they had an IC, I think they had like an ICO coin sell like a couple of years before they actually debuted. But I'm not really sure, like, no one knew about the project until they actually debuted. Insane clown posse. The internet computer thing, like, to me, it just seems like a big database. I'm just like, what's the big deal? It's just a giant-ass database. ICP had 500 million max supply. There was no way. Yeah. Why Vex not yet listed on CoinGecko? That could be a problem. I don't think getting listed on CoinGecko is a problem or not. It doesn't really matter. And the thing is, like the only the, the problem with Vex is like the only um the only exchange it's on is actually V Exchange. Like if if V Chain could actually get some of their coins listed on bigger exchanges, that would definitely help the ecosystem. But that's really not what they're focused on. ICP had five hundred million max supply. There was no way. Like, I, I never really understood ICP's vision. They had a pretty impressive team to show, but, like, I, I never really understood their vision. I'm just like, what were you supposed... I was always, like, wondering, like, what the hell is this supposed to do again? I have no idea. And also, like, the, the VET exchanges don't really, like, ha, like, don't really get picked up by, like, uh, CoinGecko or, like, uh, Coinbase right now, uh, CoinMarketCap. Yes, I just said I'm still farming Vex. They say it's decentralized. It's just a closed permission network of servers with a governance token. I mean, that's what most DeFi's are, you know. Like, that's what actually most DeFi's that claim to be de decentralized actually are. If you really go back and look at it, no one actually goes back and look at the looks at the architecture. But if I bet, I bet... I bet anything that if you actually go back and look at the architecture of a lot of DeFi's, that's exactly what all of them are. They're basically like a closed permission system uh, with like a governance token. And sometimes the governance token doesn't even really matter. It's just there for looks. It will take the internet and merge it with a computer. I see. Yeah, look, look everyone who like everyone who held on in crypto kind of got wrecked. But every, like right now, people are just accumulating more. Every, right now, people are just accumulating more by like yield farming or staking. I don't think, I mean, you can DCA in right now, but definitely wouldn't go all in yet. There's still a good chance we'll fall more. Definitely like, there's definitely a chance that it'll actually fall a lot more. Yep, NBA draft is tomorrow, though. I think Jabari Smith goes first, Chet Holmgren goes second, Bonchero goes third, and Ivy goes fourth. After that, I have no idea who will actually go fifth, sixth, or seventh. Still farming VET, need some farm subsidies from the government. I mean, I think we'll actually make quite a bit. Like, if if the VEX stuff actually survives until, like, the next the next cycle, I think we'll actually make quite a bit. I definitely think we'll actually make quite a bit. Telecoin wallet is giving is giving you 5k telecoin for opening an account on the wallet. 
Nice, but how much is 5K tel Telcoin worth? Like $3 or something? And the market is down. I never buy coins going up is too much. I bought urine at 20K, down, bad. Uh, merge on the, will pump ETH. The merge is only a testnet merge, so my guess is no. It's not a mainnet merge. We don't really even know when the mainnet merge is. I think it's supposed to be in September, but we have no idea when it actually is. Uh, I thought Crypto Crib, he was a perma bear. I guess he wanted more views, so he like started being really bullish. Um, 35K, not impossible. But I think if the if I think if the numbers are really really good next month, sure possible, but I wouldn't bet on it. I I definitely wouldn't bet on it. But like if the numbers are good, I I, I think it's a possibility. But I think betting on it's foolish right now. Uh, go stock move. I miss the good old days of pumps and crazy Plan B predictions. Isn't Plan B like super bearish now though? Because, like, Plan B made, like, gigantic predictions that were, like, way, way too bullish. He actually, well, I mean, he got a couple of months, right? And then everyone thought he was, like, a, 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 then everyone thought he was a super guru. And then, like, he got a lot of things wrong. That's what happens to all people that do predictions. I miss the, uh, yeah. I mean, you could if there's that many shorts, you could definitely we could definitely be squeezing shorts soon. But I'm not really sure if we if we're gonna do that. Do I have any thoughts on theta? I still like theta a lot. I mean, I don't think it's gonna do anything during the bear market, but I still like theta a lot. But Binance will say they stopped transaction of ETH and ERC twenty on 29th due to merge. Um. But the merge is the testnet. Why would they stop for the merge of the testnet? That doesn't make any sense. Like Vitalik actually said they're doing, I mean, they're doing the merge on testnet on June 29th. The mainnet's not until the fall, at least, if this year at all. Everyone is heading on plan B right now. Vitalik just tweeted about how plan B is misleading people and getting people wrecked. Why would, like, look, you gotta be, like, if you basically trust any crypto prediction, like 100%, you gotta be stupid because like no one gets them right all the time. I don't really have too much information on Woo Network. I mean, it was like really exciting, like a, like a, a, like several months ago, but it's kind of grown gone silent. I'm sure, like I'm sure, like you know, like these big crypto influencers and big crypto predictors all get around. So I'm sure that, that like, I'm sure like he learned a plan B or something. But obviously, like you can't trust you can't trust someone you can't trust anyone's prediction in crypto. Like they all get they all get things wrong. Bitcoin they've already debuted the Bitcoin short ETF. That's not really going to affect price that much. If anything, that'll just give us more shorts to liquidate. It's another tool that to help whales control the market. Honestly, that's really all it is. Uh, all these derivative things, they're basically just tools for, to help whales manipulate the market. Nothing more, nothing less. Really, like, it's nothing more, lo nothing less. All these things just help whales manipulate the market, which kind of pisses me off, honestly. These crypto founders really need to learn the learn time management. What are these? Uh, yeah. Sell large portions of their supply can contribute to pushing the Bitcoin. Well... In May, like in May, the Bitcoin miners actually sold a hundred percent of their mined Bitcoin. There, I think a lot of the miners are having to dip into the reserves to actually like survive right now because Bitcoin price is so low that for a lot of them it probably doesn't cover the price of their mining. Was Plan B another whale who was shorting the whole time? Probably not, but he got several months right, and then he started getting months wrong because he thought like he's one of those that thought Bitcoin would just keep going up forever and ever. Essentially, like he was—he's he was one of those prediction people that thought Bitcoin would go to like three hundred thousand or something like that. I guess he didn't really foresee the uh, economy tanking either, which people would stop selling after the first couple of days of being in green. They never let cryptos run. I mean, that's what happens when the sentiment's really bad. People are wanting to get in, get some profit, and get out. Basically, there's pretty there's a pretty heavy ceiling right now, and but if the numbers are actually good in July, we could see a substantial pump. He does have, yeah, he has a ton of subs on Twitter. I mean, like, most subs for anyone are probably bots because, like, there's so many bots on Twitter these days.
So, so many bots on Twitter. He was using his platform to promote his anti-vax. That too, yes. Leverage is a drug. It may, uh, it's pretty addicting. And that's why you don't trust the anti-vaxxers because most of them are scammers anyways. Leverage is a drug. It's pretty addicting once you get it into the game. It is, but you've got to get off of it because you're most likely going to lose. Because uh, July is the next month. That's why I look. If, if we actually have inflation fall to a significant margin uh, when the numbers come out in July, I'm sure we'll go for a pump in July. Yes, BTC will eventually get to 100K, but if they don't give you a timeline of when BTC will get to 100K, then those predictions are useless. And like they don't give you like a, they need, if they can see that, they can say that Bitcoin's going to 100K, but they need to give you a timeline of when it's actually going to happen. Okay, like if they just tell you it's going to 100K and doesn't, don't give you a timeline of when it's going to happen, then they're just BSing you anyways. Whatever happened to Elon buying Twitter deal? I think Elon is trying to figure out a way to weasel out of it right now. Because I don't think he actually ever really wanted Twitter. I think he just wanted attention. And, try, and buying Twitter was a great way to get attention for him. So I don't think he ever really wanted Twitter in the first place. He can say whatever he wants. People need to rely on their own brains to make decisions. I mean, does anyone still listen to Plan B, though? Like, he has a ton of followers, cool. But does anyone actually take him seriously anymore? Because he got, like, so many things wrong after, like, initially getting two or three months right. He can say whatever he wants. People need to rely on their own brains to make decisions. Exactly. Like, if you follow Plan... If you actually follow Plan B's, like, instructions to a T and you got wrecked, it's really your own fault because you shouldn't have done that. BTC will hit 100k by the end of 2028 for sure. People are going into uh, into Rune pretty heavily. Yep. I do think like BTC will break 100k in the next bull market though, but it could be like a year, like two years before the next bull market or a year or two before the next bull market. So we don't really know, like we don't really know um, when the next bull market will come. And we don't really know like how long this recession will actually last or the bad economic times will last. Like he... We have to get the energy prices down, but right now the energy prices are really high and they're not really coming down any what at all. I listen to Plan B when he has a model. If it makes sense, I, I just say that's interesting like a normal person. I don't leverage long and blame him when he's wrong. Yeah, look, you can't take crypto's influ crypto influencers' like predictions and play leverage on them. You're going to get wrecked if you do that because they don't really know any better than the rest of us. It's not like... It's not like crypto influencers are some kind of it's not like crypto influencers are some kind of trading gods that basically have a grip on how the market works. I mean, we don't really know any better than anyone else. I listen to play. So yeah, like basing your trades and especially basing your leverage on like plan B's predictions is like ridiculous or basing leverage on anyone's predictions. After the next two having BTC will stay over 100k. We'll see. I mean, probably. I, I, I mean, I can't say for sure, obviously, but probably, yes. Best thing to, uh, to get a trading view chart and look at the volume. Eh. I mean, like predicting the market, like predicting the market's kind of like a folly play anyways. I mean, you're, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to do it well. Like trying to predict the market's not a great play anyways. Like what kind of idiot looks at Plan B and thinks I should follow him? His advice on vaccination? Well, it's not even his advice on vaccination. Like why should I follow his trading advice bit for bit? He doesn't have a crystal ball that can tell the future. So why? Could, at least of his problem. How did you run drop from 96K to 5K? It just did, man. Like all the coins dropped massively. Like a lot of coins dropped 90%. So not supposedly and also like i think andre Kronje kind of like left the project as well a while ago or for a while if i don't think he's like actively involved in the project anymore cousin told me plan b would block you if you doubted his plan on twitter then i don't care who cares he's ob he's obviously been wrong pretty much like for a huge amount of time 
pretty sure like I mean like it's pretty obvious that he's been wrong for a very very large amount of uh, for a very long amount of time so who cares what he says Like what these what what uh, crypto profits say shouldn't really matter any what at all. Crypto profit crypto profits like what what they say really shouldn't matter at all. It's it should be completely irrelevant. Follow only project that I've invested on Twitter. Okay, cool, cool. I, I, like I said, like crypto people are no different from regular people. That's why like. This like decentralization will never work because people really want to be centralized. Like people want some kind of magical guru to like follow so they can actually blame someone else when things go wrong. But it doesn't really matter if you try to blame someone else. They're, you're not getting your money back and you can't sue him because he didn't really do anything illegal. He's basically just stating his opinion and you followed his opinion when you shouldn't have followed his opinion and you should have just done your own research. That's really what it comes down to. People are lazy and they want to scapegoat when something goes wrong. But their scapegoat plan doesn't really work because you can't really, because everyone's just giving their opinion and you can't sue someone for giving their opinion because they're not like insiders or anything. Is better decentralized? Yeah, but humans on a natural level are not decentralized. Humans want centralization. Humans want authority figures. Like humans actually want authority figures to follow. That's been pretty evident all throughout history. Like, like people as a whole don't truly want to be decentralized. That's why governments form in the first place. It's all called the life hacks. Yeah. I mean, like decentralization is everyone keeping their money under their own pillow. No one does that. We want central banks. Is Cardano 88 truly decentralized? Yes, because like they actually incentivize pools to actually not be, uh, they actually do incentivize pools uh, to not get too big. My portfolio down 80% from YFI Luna VET. I mean, you basically lost all the Luna because Terra Luna basically went to zero. VET is hanging on, but it's much less than what it used to be. YFI is bleh. I think all out of the out of those three coins, VET is probably the best one you got right now because Luna basically went to zero, so that's out. YFI actually I think is dumped more than VET. Cardano isn't truly really decentralized, and most of the core development stopped coming from IOHK. I mean, you're gonna have to like somehow get people to incentivize people to actually develop for you, which is gonna be incredibly difficult. It is going to be very, very difficult for anyone to actually do, convince people to do that. Nothing is truly decentralized. Truly decentralized when a majority of the country can, can't can ban the, that chain, but ADA is decentralized. Uh, I mean, in, in that regards, yes. I mean, the thing is, like, first of all, the go governments obviously don't like decentralization, but people as a whole, like I said, don't really want decentralization. They want a central authority figure to actually follow so they can blame someone when something goes wrong. Keep my money in a 60-foot deep well. That's what I used to fish uh, for every time I go. I see. Like decentral, even in crypto, decentralization has almost become kind of a meme. Only say if one chain is more decentralized than the other, but nothing right now is truly decentralized. I suppose, I mean, even Bitcoin has the pools. So the best offline hardware wallet to download, um, you don't really download a hardware wallet you kind of just buy one like ledger nano nano you don't download a nano you have to like order order one like a net uh, like a net a ledger nano x or something like that like each coin has their official wallets and those are like desktop wallets that you can actually use but they're not like they're, they're not ledgers those wallets are not ledgers I think Cardano is more decentralized than most other blockchains, though. They have thousands of pools. IOHK is not making any of the blocks anymore, but they do actually de depend on IOHK for like further development. Cloud Chat is a Web3 social media platform, which is live. Okay. D 
Do you think we are entering the tribulations? We've been in the tribulations for a long time. In 2016, we need that wallet for BTC, but it was free though. I mean, wallets are still free. You can still get desktop wallets for free. You you don't actually have to like get a ledger to pull, pull your uh, crypto off the exchanges, you know. We'll go sideways around 20k for a while and eventually bottom at 12 to 14 before slowly moving up the next two years. No, when we move up, it's not a slowly moving up. When we move up, it, it actually moves up really quickly. And like I said, it depends on the num it depends on monthly numbers. Bitcoin's so attached Bitcoin is so so attached to the stock market now. If the numbers are good, the stock market is going to shoot up next month and Bitcoin will probably go with it. See uh There's also nothing saying that we'll actually buy, we'll, we'll actually go to 12 or 14k. I mean like like if the second week of July rolls around, second third week of July rolls around and the CPI numbers go down like to 8 or 7.9 or something, I definitely believe the stock market will shoot up and the crypto market will shoot up as well. So it depends a lot on it depends a lot on the reporting in the future. Was there any more news on Cloudflare? No. Um, Cloudflare got their problems fixed. They like, but they, but the the hilarious thing is like because they actually had a like Cloudflare like took down like literally like half the internet when they went down. I found that kind of, I actually, um, I actually find that kind of hilarious that Cloudflare basically took down like half the internet when it went down. So you can actually see how centralized the internet actually is. It only takes one service like Cloudflare to basically take everything down. So if aliens ever if aliens ever wanted to if aliens ever wanted to destroy Earth, if aliens actually ever wanted to destroy Earth, like all they really have to do all they really have to do is basically like uh, attack like something like cloudflare and if they're successful at attacking cloudflare then they're basically like people are basically eventually people people are basically screwed don't forget aws uh amazon web services the thing is a lot of like a lot of stuff just like a lot of this stuff just like a lot of people just don't have backups so if if cloudflare goes down they're just completely screwed yeah, like for any of this to actually operate, we do need the internet. So if they take the internet down, like the, the world's basically just completely screwed if the internet goes down. I mean, like so many people depend on the network for their jobs and operations and everything, and everything that if aliens somehow destroy the internet, like we, we would just like die. What happened in the last couple of years, it seems like four horsemen of apocalypse have gotten loose. Uh, it's called we printed too much money. And now, like the bills coming due, and then we don't like the fact that the bills coming due. That's what that's that's what really happened. We printed like way too much damn money. No internet, and our digital Chuck E. Cheese tokens go bye bye. Yeah, more or less. I mean, like none of this crap really works without the network. I think people kind of forget that point. Like none of this crap actually works without the network, and uh, without the internet, like you can't really transact anything. Uh, why so sideways will be the next big move when SEC announced inflation. The SEC does not actually announce inflation. The Fed announces inflation. The SEC has nothing to do with inflation. The SEC is an enforcement unit. It doesn't really like report numbers or anything. It was raining day at LA and it was hot global warming. LA doesn't get that much rain, does it? And like Southern California has been in drought for a while. The argument about blockchain needing the internet as a weakness is laughable. No internet, no society. Yeah, everything needs the internet right now. It's not only blockchain needing the internet. Like, literally everything needs the internet. That's not really an argument. Without internet, even cash hardly works. All your credit 
uh, yes, the credit card system would honestly go down, but like a like cold hard cash would actually still work in the case of a network crash. So would gold. And so would roundhouse kicks to the face. Without internet, even cat, yeah. But Gemini did not go down, I checked. Maybe Gemini didn't really, I don't know if Gemini actually depends on Cloudflare. Like a lot of the, a lot of the trading platforms didn't have a backup uh, in case like the uh, Cloudflare, uh, Cloudflare proxy actually went down. If internet goes down, how I will buy, I buy things I don't need? You can't, and it'd be horrifying. Some credit cards still work without the internet. I've actually had a, like, I know Visa and MasterCard both completely depend on their network. So if you didn't have that network, neither Visa or MasterCards would actually work. Because I've actually, like, there's been plenty of times where, like, the Visa network is down and I had to, like, stand out, I had to stand at the cash register and wait for them to, like, manually do, like, a debit card thing or something. I've actually seen it where their network's down before. It doesn't work. Like, Visa and MasterCard do not work without the network. And essentially, like, that would shut down, like, 90% of all credit card use. You still can't do transactions with any, you can't do it, transactions with any wallet without an actual network. Like, how are you going to get one wallet to communicate with another one? You don't have some like magical wire that does it. The concept of trading digital currency would be absolutely valid. Yeah, you can't really trade or transact any digital currency without a network. I guess you can try to use Bluetooth, but that's kind of tricky. Yeah, you can kind of try to use Bluetooth, but it is really kind of tricky. Like all, all digital currency is dependent on like an, an internet or a network actually existing. You might be able to check the amount in your wallet, but you wouldn't be able to do anything with that. Will crypto become independent and not affected by stocks and inflation soon? Wasn't that the whole point? No, that's not going to happen. I mean, look, crypto's being more integrated into like mainstream, the mainstream economy. So that's just not going to like, that's really just not going to be a thing, man. Like, it, like they want crypto to op. They really want crypto to operate as an economy outside of all of this, and that's really just not going to happen. Be physically traded goods. I, I mean, look, all cryptos are basically just digital code strings. You don't really have a physical crypto. Were people talking about spend, sending crypto with radio waves a few years ago? Yeah, I don't know if that ever happened. We need banks for we can buy houses and in the end they're going to select which coins they're going to use. A lot of stuff is actually going to be regulated, but the market will actually force its way as well. Have you noticed crypto YouTube numbers growing last week? Yeah, I mean like the number of people watching me have, has gone up, yes. I don't really know if it's true for other crypto channels though. I haven't really checked them. What's the, was the news Vitalik announced recently about 2.0? Um, I don't know. I think the, I mean, like the, the one news that everyone does know about for 2.0 right now is that 2.0, uh, there's a test net merge on the 29th, but that's not a main net merge. He wanted people to control their money. Yeah, uh, that, that's true. YouTuber thing, your hobby, or do you make... I, I make a couple of bucks off of it, definitely. But still in a collapsed society trading... Uh, thanks, man. Thanks for the donation. Thank you for the donations, wherever my harmonica is. It uses a phone line. That's kind of slow. You can't do a transaction and call someone at the same time. So that would actually be kind of problematic. So 500 Japanese yen, like 500 Japanese yen is roughly 369 right now. Well, that's, that ratio is actually lower than I remember it. But then again, the US dollar is really strong against other currencies right now. So I guess that's why. Either way, you say you know more, know more and made more from crypto than the average person. I would say so probably, but the thing is like, I don't know about like, it, the thing is like, it depends how much you invested in crypto in the first place. I don't actually know what percentage YouTube takes. 
Houses are cheap. I think they, they take like 30% or 35% or something. Houses are cheap in Japan because of the exchanges. USD is 24-year high in JPY. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the US dollar index, it's actually really, really strong against other currencies right now. It, it actually depends on what. On some things, YouTube's take le YouTube takes less. On other things, YouTube actually takes more. So, so it really depends on like, it really depends on what for YouTube. Isn't it really difficult for foreigners to buy in Japan though? A, a lot of the Asian, like, I mean, China aside, because crypto is actually illegal. But like the other Asian countries, their like crypto economies are kind of like se sectioned off from the rest of the world. Japanese yen tanked. One of the main reasons I want to go back to the States, plus his family. Japan's too damn crowded for me, man. Like, half their population lives around Tokyo. Is also close to zero, so no new demand for housing. Dude, J Japan and China are both going to have huge population problems in the future. Kids cost so much to maintain in those countries now that, like, a lot of people are just choosing not, either not to have kids or having one kid. I've been hearing lots of uh, talk bears are on the way out. Could you foresee this in the summer months? No, not while the economy's in the shitter. Not really. I mean, I would like for the bear market to like just go away, but I don't think it's going to happen. Tokyo, Nagoya. Nagoya is a pretty nice place. Japan's like super expensive though. The, the salary doesn't really match the living costs. And, like, there's no space in the city. Tokyo is, like, super, super expensive because it's, like, super crowded. And I, I don't think I would want to live in a place like that. Isn't living expense in China nothing compared to the U.S.? Well, salary in China is also nothing compared to the U.S. Like, in terms of salary, compare, like, salary living expense ratio is actually worse than the U.S. And, uh, is worse than the U.S. and China. It, also, in a lot of the bigger cities, it's actually getting a lot more expensive. It is pretty expensive in the big cities. And like I said, like the, the, the amount of money you make doesn't actually match up. The amount of money you make does not match up at all with like the cost of living, especially in the bigger cities. Don't most people own their apartment. I heard it's a norm for own it and not rent too much. Yeah, uh, look, the... Like people, there's not a lot of people that actually rent. Generally what happens is like parents generally buy like a unit for their kids. Like generally you, you basically keep living with your parents until you're married. And when you're married, your parents essentially buy a unit for you because there's no way a newlywed couple can actually afford any kind of housing in China. Like a, a, a house in China or like a unit in a building generally costs like 30 years of salary. So it's really off, key, off tilter there. Like housing is like super, super expensive compared to the United States and China. People you don't know about China is people have to pay for their car license plates in the big cities. Yes. Also like the driver's license test in China is like a hell of a lot harder than it is in the United States. Like I would not actually want to drive in China like ever. Yeah, like generally like housing, like housing costs are essentially like half of like someone's like uh, wage. I also saw a video on how China extremely overplayed prices on ghost houses. Yes, uh, a, a lot of those cities are very, very much overinflated. That's pretty much a fact. There, there are a bunch of ghost cities that like no one actually lives in over there. That That's, that's definitely true. Also, like, also, like, in the cities, like, a lot of rich people just buy up all the housing, so there's just not enough housing. Institutional adoption is key for growth. Uh, the insurance in Chinese healthcare, there's basically none. You basically have to pay for everything. Which three cities in the world would you like to reinvest in real estate? I don't do real estate investments. Um... Because, like, the, the cities that are, like, the big cities are all expensive.
but China is leading in terms of transportation with subways and all why even use a car. It's more for flexing than anything else, honestly. You like if you live in the big city in China, there's no reason to have a car at all. It's it's more for like rich people and flexing. It does give you a little bit of freedom, but there's also no park like there's nowhere to park in China either. Those ghost houses are actually worth more unfinished, supposedly. Maybe, but like, like there's no demand for them, though, is the thing. Like, they have to keep up, they actually want to keep up, like, China can't actually let its housing uh, market collapse. If the Chinese housing market collapses, then their whole economy basically collapses. Yeah, there are American cars in China. They're pretty high value, though. Like, most of the Chinese cars kind of suck, honestly. See you tomorrow. Most of the Chinese model cars kind of suck. WeChat is like all Western apps combined on steroids. I actually have... Um, WeChat's like their official Chinese app or whatever. I don't know how exactly that works, but WeChat's like technically like their official Chinese app. People are aware of outside world? Yeah, of course they're aware. Look, Chinese news is government controlled, so it's very, very much propaganda give, uh, driven. But obviously, they know there's an outside world, but they only really get their news from one source, and that's the government. CCTV is basically a, gov a government media arm, and they like CCTV is completely a government media arm. So they basically tow the government line. No, they cannot actually buy crypto without VPN. China got their own cars that they knock off foreign brands. I rode in a Chinese Land Rover once. I've ridden in many Chinese cars. Uh, they're not as good as the ones they knock off, but they work. I saw a scary video of some skyscraper in China that was swaying so bad it had to be evacuated. Yeah, sometimes they definitely skimp on the quality of crap over there. I mean, that's that you can't deny that. Like the quality of some of that crap is like really bad over there. Like everyone was like, uh, everyone was like saying like how amazing it was. They built a hospital in two weeks, but I'm like, yeah, those buildings really aren't made to last guys. That thing might fall down within like three years. China car, a more copy than an original idea. Well, technically all cars, like all cars operate on the same principle. So yes, they're more copy than original idea. But, like, they're, they're basically knockoffs from the original brand. They're just not as good as the original brand because they skimp on a lot of the parts. The biggest American car brand in China is Buick. Maybe. Like, I, I haven't... I mean, like, Toyotas and Hondas cost a lot of money. Well, Toyota and Honda are Japanese, first of all. Yeah, it's probably Buick for American cars. Like, Audi is actually pretty big over there, actually, for rich people. Like, Audi is actually really big in China for rich people. The Kowloon City is still mind-blowing to think about. That's in Hong Kong. I don't know what that is. Hong Kong, Hong Kong, um, Hong Kong is a special jurisdiction. It's Hong Kong is different from the rest of China. Isn't Lucid Motors Chinese? Uh, yeah, but I, I don't really know too much about Chinese brand cars. Like... I go back and visit every once in a while. I, I live there for a while, but I, I go back and visit every once in a while. It's The changes there are pretty amazing. The changes that like have actually taken place in China are actually pretty amazing. Um, so... Like, a lot of things have actually changed in the last 20 years. But yeah, like, the, the Chinese knockoffs of American brands aren't actually as good as the original American brands. They do skimp on a lot of the quality. And Chinese cars in China are obviously a lot less expensive than American cars over there. So, yeah, you know. These architecture design are blowing. Eh, I wouldn't exactly say that.
uh, Z is pronounced Z in the UK. Z is actually pronounced Z in a lot of places. Chinese have to be stopped. Stopped for what? China has like a myriad of problems that the government just masks. Like they're like essentially like they have a they have a ton of problems that the government essentially just masks. They try not to deal with it until later, but sooner or later they're going to actually have to deal with it. How Macau works and how easy it is for rich people to launder there. Macau's basically like a gambling town. You you I mean like I, it's it basically existed for its casinos. Uh, Macau's like Hong Kong as well. It's like a special jurisdiction. I wouldn't say exactly that they're I wouldn't say exactly that they're happy in their own world. Like it's more like they're happy because they're told to be happy. There is no room. There's no room for anyone to be not satisfied. There's actually no room for people to not be satisfied. I've never, I've been to Macau outside of the main casino strip is very poor. The wealth from the casino doesn't make its way to the city. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very true. That is actually very true. Macau was a Portuguese, Portuguese held territory until recently. Uh, it was, I think it was returned like two years after Hong Kong. But the, the celebration for Macau coming back wasn't nearly as big as Hong Kong. Uh, the, the whole point of Macau is the casino. So yes, it's going to suck if you don't gamble. Uh, you, you're definitely right about that. Like the, the whole, like Macau is all about the casinos and casinos in Macau are huge. So like if you don't like actually gamble, there's actually no point in going to Macau. It's still under some British rules. It, it, it's Macau is never British, it's Portuguese. Do I gamble? I've been to casinos. I mean, I play, I play poker in casinos from time to time. I haven't been in several years, though. I played a lot of poker back in college. Uh, and I played, I've been to the casino multiple times after college. I just haven't gone in like five or six years. It's not something that I'm extremely interested in. Is one BTC enough enough for what? I mean, if you really want, if you're really wanting a big multiplier, you need to go for altcoins instead of bitcoins. Buying crypto is enough gambling for me. I, I guess you could call it like investing in crypto gambling. I read, uh, you mean, huh? I jumped off bu the bungee jump from Macau Tower through uh, one of the world's tallest outside the casinos. There's nothing else to do in Macau. Yeah, like everything in Macau goes on in the casinos. That's what it's all about. I might exit on sheep soon. Okay. Yes, I'm still holding my coins. Yes, look, Macau's Macau is more grand than Vegas. Like some of some of their casinos are actually knockoffs of Vegas's casinos, but they're actually better than Vegas's casinos. Macau is look, Macau is honestly. Macau's just a casino, like a gambling attraction, man. There's like no, there's honestly like no point in Macau. If you don't, like if you're not gambling, like you don't gamble, don't go to Macau. Most gambling in China is done through loopholes outside Macau. I mean the big stuff, yes. No drinking in Macau at casinos, it really isn't the same. I wouldn't go back. 
Uh, yeah, I, I think both Hong Kong and Macau have a strict border. Um, there are long lines of people wanting to go into Macau to like visit and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, like, Macau was interesting. I've only, I, like, I've entered once just to visit, like, the Venetian or something like that. And they have, like, pretty good restaurants in the casinos as well. Like, really high-end ones. But realistically, if you're, not a if you're not a gambler, there's actually, like, zero reason. He's right. Like, people are right. There's zero, zero, zero reason to go there. All right, guys. That's going to be it for tonight. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell notifications button. I'll be back tomorrow. I will see you guys later.